So India is obviously one of the key strategic position or strategic countries that Baruj has. Yeah, uh, we have been in the country for more than 20 years. The backbone of Baruj is very much associated with the technology that we uh, we have, not only with the customers themselves, but also with value chain partners. Right. So it depends on the uh, different uh, verticals, industry verticals that we are talking about. Obviously, brand owners' inputs are then taken. Utility companies. Uh, are also very, very, very valuable inputs, and we interact across the value chain in different aspects. Uh, having said that, again, the feedback of the customer is the most important feedback that we have to make sure that we are keeping an edge. Uh, from an economical point of view, IMF is, is, is forecasting a drop of GDP of around 4.9%. Uh, we personally believe on the value creation that polymers uh, provide eh, from the long term. Uh, to the society. Actually, COVID is causing people to think about do they want to utilize public transportation yes. or do they want to, to utilize their personal transportation methods? Uh, some aspects are what you're saying about a spurge. So perhaps people uh, decided to buy and stock materials yeah, that they wouldn't normally have. And obviously, this creates a, a demand for packaging that was not uh, perhaps prepared for. The, the overall uh, demand in India is not uh, negative. That's what we see. China is definitely one of the, the key uh, markets for Baruch, yeah? Uh, and we are def definitely very committed to China uh, as a market as well. Uh, we have a very big footprint in China. A joint venture between Adnoc and Borealis, Baruj is a leading petrochemicals company that provides innovative plastic solutions for the energy, infrastructure, mobility, packaging, healthcare, and agricultural industries. With 4.5 million tons of annual capacity, Baruj has the world's largest integrated polyfin complex with the ambition to further expand its current capacity by 2030. Joining us on the show today from Singapore is Janathis Mello, Baruj's Senior Vice President for Asia South. He oversees Baruj business in the Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. He also serves as the Chairman of Baruj India. We have been associated with Baruj for almost over a decade now. Mr. Wim Royals, James Ong, Michael Pell, Yusuf Taha, Tamo, Esther Dio, Peter Mamrose, Lawrence Jones have all been speakers at our summits. A very warm welcome, Mr. Mello, to the show Insights with Nidhi Varma. Thank you. Thank you very much to invite me to the show. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, to be able to address the Indian customers that we really care about. Pleasure is all ours, and uh, we'll begin with the questions. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mello, what are Baruch's business objectives in India now? Yeah, so India is obviously one of the key strategic position or strategic countries that Baruch has. Yeah, uh, we have been in the country for more than 20 years, uh, and uh, we are very, very happy to engage with the customers. Uh, we have seen a very uh, rapid growth of Baruch in India. And we are delighted to be part of the growth uh, that India is expected to happen in the next couple of years as well. Brilliant. On that optimistic note, uh, India has many large producers of PE and PPE, many indigenous players. What are some of the challenges that Buruj has faced in establishing in foothold in India? Yeah. As I mentioned, again, Buruj is more than 20 years in India. So we have established this foothold through time. Yeah? And I think what really differentiated Buruj uh, from many uh, different suppliers is our uh, innovative solution. This is the core of the DNA of Baruch uh, to be innovative yeah, and to create value through people in innovation. Yeah? Uh, so uh, in, in Baruch, as you have mentioned in the beginning, we have different uh, groups of uh, value chains that we serve, infrastructure products, energy products, and packaging products as well. 
And for each one of them, there are a specific portfolio uh, of grades that are basically complementing the overall solution that we want to offer. Yeah, and I think that's exactly how Bruges uh, was able to, to establish itself in India, uh, both from a solution point of view, but also from a very strong partnership with customers. And we, we really like to interact, we really like to understand how the business model of the customers are and to provide solutions that address their needs. Excellent. You have a very brilliant team in India, always had. We've interacted with them a lot. So congratulations on building that vertical very strong. Thank you. Um, apart from this, any other differentiations for customers that you offer? Yeah, no, I think there are a couple of topics, right? So again, the, the backbone of Baruj is very much associated with the technology that we, uh, we have, uh, the innovation then that is uh, generated by this technology. And together with that, we have, as you have mentioned, the largest integrated site uh, of polymers complex in the world. What obviously allow us, and it's very close to India, as we all are all aware, uh, what obviously allow us to gain uh, a lot of resilience in terms of uh, supply chain, uh, allowing uh, uh, us to serve the customers in uh, a good manner, uh, not only from a product portfolio point of view, but also from a supply reliability point of view. And I think combining these two aspects with, again, our uh, deep understanding of the customers and uh, deep relationships that we have built so far, I think we found a winning combination that is allowing Borus to be successful. Yes, I totally agree with you there. Uh, other than the resin, what services uh, Borus provides to its customers in India, which kind of gives you a little edge over a few of the other raw material providers? No, it, it's really interesting. So. Again, we really like to interact, right? So we really like to understand the customers in details. We are very proud of this. Uh, and one of the key aspects of the way that we serve the customers is also collect then this feedback about how the independent customers are actually running their machines and understanding how they are utilizing our polymers and feed this up into our innovation pipeline. Yeah, so there's a very strong relationship between uh, the, the commercial teams that are actually discussing with customers and so on, marketing teams and so on, but also in, in our innovation pipeline. And I think uh, that, as I mentioned, that combination have been very successful. Uh, many products have been uh, launched through these 20 years of Borouge, many of them in India. And uh, that, that uh, combination of partnerships are what we are proud about. And I think it's a bit of a differentiation versus what other competitors are, are doing. Excellent. So the USP remains to take the feedback from the customers on how the resin is working on the machine and then kind of provide them if any valued input is there, uh, which is inbuilt in the resin. Yes. And, and not only with the customers themselves, but also with value chain partners, right? So it depends on the uh, different uh, verticals, industry verticals that we are talking about. Obviously, brand owners inputs are then taken, utility companies. Uh, are also very, very, very valuable inputs and we interact across the value chain in different aspects. Uh, having said that, again, the feedback of the customer is the most important feedback that we have to make sure that we are keeping an edge. Well understood. Um, Jonathan, there is a global slowdown in the economic activities. Mm. Almost all countries are expected to slow and show contraction in mm. GDP in 2021-21. Uh, mm. Our has been, I think, 23.4. India reported that in the last quarter. In this backdrop, how do you see the polyolefin to fare in 2020, the balance, and the next year? Yeah, I think uh, that there are two aspects. I think we cannot... Uh, negate the situation we are all living in uh, from an economical point of view. IMF is, is, is forecasting a drop of GDP of around 4.9% uh, globally. And obviously we are on a, on a specific situation. Having said that, I think there are a couple of, of things to reflect on. Uh, the first one is if you see the forecast of polymers on that uh, reduction, uh, it, it is not on the same order of magnitude. Yeah, it is obviously lower. And it has a lot to do with the value that polymers uh, add to society. Uh, and especially in the conditions that we are living, uh, the capability of having uh, safe food, the capability of having uh, value chains that are properly managed are very, very important. And since the beginning of, of the pandemic, we have seen 
very cle clearly that all the governments understand uh, the value of polyolefins, polyethylene, and polypropylene on that. So as a consequence of this, first, uh, we see that the slowdown on the polymer side, uh, perhaps is slower than what we, we will see as an overall GDP contraction. That's one side. The second side is, um, I think the society also uh, is appreciating uh, the, the aspects that are associated with uh, polyolefin solutions more than, uh, or is becoming more clear for, for the society, the value that we, we add uh, in many aspects. Food packaging is again, one of them but also in other uh, value chains, right? Healthcare is obviously one of the key topics that we are discussing right now. And Boruj is very proud to have a very good portfolio on the healthcare solutions as well. That's a second aspect of that. Um, that likely uh, helps us to be a bit, again, above that recovery, yeah? Uh, the third aspect is uh, some uh, global trends associated with uh, uh, electrification um, uh, and, and other uh, economical, general economical situations are actually also uh, being beneficial for some applications in polymers, right? So utilization, for example, of uh, uh, polymers in cars um, that reduce, that become, make the cars more lightweight, that allows battery to be used in a longer scale, they're also very positive. And this always happening at the same time. It's not because we are in the middle of, of the situation we are living from a pandemic point of view, that all the other innovations are also not coming into stream. Yeah, so that, that aspects also allow us to, to be very positive. So uh, again, we shouldn't downplay the situation we are living. There is a recovery. We have seen many different forecasts of how this recovery will look like. Uh, we personally believe on the value creation that polymers uh, provide eh, from the long term uh, to the society. And uh, that allows us to be very well positioned in the different uh, aspects of, of the business and the different value chains we operate on. Thanks for sharing. We understood clearly. I think yeah. we are a little ahead of the curve uh, as far as the growth will be there. Yeah. Um, the world is faced with low crude prices and lower economic activity, like I mentioned. How long do you think it will take for the demand to come back to the pre-COVID level? Yeah, so again, it's a difficult question to answer directly, right? There are many variables that are going on. We obviously are uh, following different reports with different scenarios. And many, uh, that, that all of these aspects are basically not dependent on Buruj itself there are different scenarios being played. I think what we are doing as Bruges is being very proactive on understanding these different scenarios and different options. We see uh, that some countries perhaps we will have recoveries faster than others, yeah, depending on how they manage the situation. And I, the, the fact that Bruges have such a global footprint together with Borealis as, as uh, one of the owners, but also partner in this case, allows us to have quite good resilience uh, to see how the, the development will look like. Uh, very difficult to forecast, very difficult to give you a precise answer on your question as much as I would like to. And I think all of the audience would like to have as well. Uh, but I think the, the, the word that I would like to, to leave with everybody now is about uh, flexibility and be able to adapt. Look at opportunities perhaps on value chains that you are not tapping and see that some of them actually will be opportunities to the COVID situation and allow to get that uh, benefit of growth on that specific uh, businesses that are uh, in a better condition right now. Yes, well said. That is the flexibility as well as the adaptability so as we yeah. can sustain this period. That is the key yes. uh, success as of now. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Janan, in India, we are facing a massive slowdown in the auto sector, which got mm. accelerated in the Q1 of 2020 as the numbers came out. Yeah. Um, you would have a you know, view of the worldwide mm. way the auto industry is doing. Uh, how has uh, it impacted uh, the sales on plastics for the auto sector worldwide? I think uh, worldwide, uh, we have seen slowdown in the auto sector. It's not only in India. Again, different countries will recover differently, perhaps on different speeds, depending on the economical situation of the country and more than anything on 
how the customer sentiment is at that point in time and do they feel comfortable to purchase a new vehicle, right? So uh, on a macro level, we have seen slowdown across. Some countries have recovered uh, a bit faster than others. As I have mentioned as well, uh, there are other aspects on that industry that are happening, right? So again, electrification on the industry, uh, capability of uh, perhaps utilizing, in our case, polymers to extend battery life is another very important aspect. What we uh, have also seen is that uh, actually COVID is causing people to think about, do they want to utilize public transportation yes. or do they want to, to utilize their personal transportation methods? What my drive, and is I think a bit early to make a final conclusion on this, but my drive a different uh, demand in terms of uh, not only cars, but light vehicles as well. Yeah, yeah. so you see some of these trends going on at this point in time, and it's very important that we, we keep our, uh, an eye on it. Yes. Um, and, and again, specifically on some of these aspects, Boruj is very well positioned. So together with the customers, again, and we do hope that this will allow us to be uh, more resilient even going forward in the future. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Janathis, uh, after the pandemic breakdown, uh, it impacted plastic demand in most segments. Uh, mm -hmm. Pharma, non-woven, masks, PPE, was very strong, you know, food, hygiene. How does Barut see the sectorial demand shift in the times to come forward? It may have been a spurt, and when the vaccine is out and everyone mm. has got it, uh, what will be the stable scenario like? How do you think? Yeah, no, uh, I, I think there are different aspects of what is pandemic generating, right? So uh, some aspects are what you're saying about a spurge. So perhaps people uh, decided to buy any stock materials yeah, that they wouldn't normally have. And obviously this creates a, a demand for packaging that was not uh, perhaps prepared for. Yeah, that these cases are very much associated with one-time events. At the same time, what we see is uh, changes on customer behavior, uh, many of them associated perhaps with uh, cleaning products. Yeah, the sanitization and so on and so forth that will the, the knowledge of the population around some of these aspects have just increased, yeah? And um, the tendency is that this will stick for more long time. So the fact that, uh, again, people have more knowledge about what they should do to keep hygiene on a, on a different level will likely stick even after the pandemic, yeah? So that's the second aspect that we, we definitely see as a positive trend. So depends again on which vertical. And what I would invite the, the customers to look into is really what is the final utilization of the product that each one of us produce and come back and think, would that uh, be something that is sustainable in the longer term? Yeah. Is that a final customer behavioral change that drives that uh, or not? I think the third aspect of this is obviously circularity. Yeah. So the fact that people are conscious about the impact of uh, plastics in, in society and the need to close the loop and to be circular, this uh, will not change. Yeah, we are convinced that this is something that is to stay. It's not because of the pandemic that there will be a fundamental change on that. Uh, we discuss very much with brand owners, we discuss very much with other value chain uh, partners, uh, and we, we see this as a fundamental trend. And we as Bruges uh, are very committed to guarantee that there is circularity on the system as well. There are many activities that are ongoing uh, to, to provide that circularity together again with, with uh, Borealis as one of the key partners on that area. Yes, though sustainability was had a huge uh, role or it was on the blueprint everywhere a little before the pandemic. Now people may have uh, shifted their focus a little bit to more of sustaining themselves and the mm -hmm. operations. But I think a little bit in the long run, the focus on sustainability will always be there. I, yes, I, no, for, yeah. uh, absolutely, for sure. Yeah, so we, we see that. And again, we are discussing very much with different brand owners. Uh, and we also see this tendency on society. And it, and it is uh, fundamentally the right thing to do. Yes, and all the more now. Uh, Janathis, what has been your experience on demand from the Indian market in the last uh, two quarters? And uh, what is your outlook uh, for the Indian market demand for the next two quarters? Yeah, no, it, it is hard to give you a precise answer on this. Again, very much dependent on the individual pockets of, uh, of industry. 
Yeah, so uh, you mentioned yourself, food packaging is obviously still uh, a demand that is more on the healthy side. If you would then compare with more, uh, perhaps infrastructure related projects that require manpower, yeah, to be utilized and deployed due to the uh, situation we are all living in, this manpower perhaps were not uh, deployed at the same speed. So um, the, the overall uh, demand in India is not uh, negative. That's what we see. Uh, obviously, it's not at the same level prior to the pandemic, but it depends a lot on the vertical. I think that that is the message I want to give. Uh, our outlook, again, very much associated with how the pandemic will evolve. We do believe that the fundamentals on the Indian economy that are driving all this growth that we are all uh, proud to see yeah, in India in the last couple of uh, years and we all the different organism forecasts, I think that fundamentals are still there, right? So urbanization, uh, growth of middle class of the Indian population, people getting uh, in better in, from a normal uh, standards of living point of view, these fundamentals are still there. It might play out a little bit depending on how the, con the, the COVID pandemic will uh, actually evolve. And we are watching uh, carefully from our side as well. Uh, yeah. Mr. Mello, what are the future plans uh, for India for expanding the network, the distribution? You have uh, Sandeep and his team already here. <laughs> Maybe new uh, grades. What are the plans for India? Yeah, no, I, again, as I mentioned, right? So India is a very strategic uh, market for Baruch and it will always be. Um, we have obviously uh, ambitions to grow together with the market, right? So, uh, and that network that we have today, as you have uh, mentioned, is very well established. We have uh, quite some uh, well-known people in the ground. You mentioned Sandeep as one of them, right? That combined with the expertise that we have in Abu Dhabi, also in Singapore, makes a very success story. And we do believe that that uh, recipe is the right recipe for continuous growth in India as well. Uh, and that's the way to go. Brilliant. Uh, is China a major player for you? And how do you see your prospects for supplying to China in the future with the little anti-China sentiment uh, uh, going around? Yes. Yeah. No, China is definitely one of the, the key uh, markets for Baruch. Yeah. Uh, and we are def definitely very committed to China uh, as a market as well. Uh, we have a very big footprint in China uh, from uh, people, again, interacting with customers, marketing activities, and so on and so forth. We are very committed to see how China will uh, evolve in the next couple of, uh, of years as well. And again, China was one of the first countries to uh, perhaps have a better recovery out of the pandemic, what is also also very important for us. They are much ahead of the curve than all of us. Yeah. Mm. Um, Mr. Mello, the pandemic has leaving all of us, it has actually left with long lasting impact on how business will be done in future, what verticals, as you've rightly mentioned, what new innovations have been done in the manufacturing and the servicing part for the customers in the last two quarters? No, um, I think many things have been done. So the, the very first part of this all, right, is the way that we interact with customers. The fact that we are having perhaps this interview on a video conferencing for me from home, you from home, it's, it's unique. And I don't think we would have this kind of uh, cases in the past. Uh, and obviously that also uh, apply to the way that we interact into the customers, right? So um, many aspects and boundaries of how we have been uh, managing the business have been rethought, yeah? Uh, how to, uh, again, discuss with customers more from technical side as well. What allows us actually to utilize our global network of people uh, to serve the independent markets. So it's actually a quite positive uh, innovation from a digitalization, if you'd like to put this way, yeah, that we see. Um, besides that, obviously, Boruj has, again, a very well-known, uh, great portfolio on the, in the individual verticals that we have been discussing. Uh, and that uh, continues to be our uh, uh, major value proposition, as you have discussed, together with this partnership. So I think the, the major thing that has changed in the last uh, couple of months, and we expect this to be retained, is very much this way to interact with the customers that actually is generating, in many cases, opportunities. We can talk with much more people 
then perhaps we would be able to, if it would be one individual uh, on one of the factory from one of our uh, converter customers. Yeah, this, this is actually very positive. Yes, actually the challenge has been converted into an opportunity, uh, which is highly yes. motivating. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mello, some specific initiatives that you're uh, taking uh, towards responsible care in India? Yeah, yeah, no, sure. Uh, I mean, Boruj is a sign of, of uh, responsible care, as you are aware of uh, ISO 14 and one as well. And we are very proud to be part of that commitment, right? And through our, all our activities, responsible care is one of the key aspects. We are very happy to not only depart, but to promote uh, that uh, standards across the industry. Um, and all the activities that we actually perform in India or outside of India in Abu Dhabi, across the globe, follow the, the, respons the responsible care practices. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Mr. Mello, uh, what are your key takeaways yourself from this pandemic? Would you like to share a message with our customers who will be watching this show? Yeah, I think a, a couple of messages. I think um, the first one is we need to remain positive, right? So it remains positive on the outlook. Look for the opportunities that, uh, that are generated in the current business environment, but even beyond. Uh, at the same time, keep an eye on what is happening, uh, on reality to adapt. I think the second one is um, resilience is extremely important. Um, Boruj is proud to be resilient in many aspects and to supply uh, to, to the customers as well uh, and have this resilience as part of our uh, design. And I think if I would be one of the convertants right now, I would think about that flexibility, this capability of adapting the portfolio uh, as one of the key aspects going forward. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Uh, we are going to thank you so much, Mr. Mello, for your time, for sharing your views and your thoughts with our customers and also your plans for India. We hope to see you soon on the other side with the Baruch team, physically, maybe in one of our summits that yes. we are planning shortly. And uh, from all our customers from India side, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot for the time. Thank you for the interview. It has been a pleasure. And uh, again, I wish the same to, that we could meet personally uh, relatively soon. Yes. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you.